Hi, my name is Andy and I screwed you. I absolutely screwed you. But that's the difference between me and other people. I will look you dead in the eye and say, hey, you know, I just kind of screwed you. That was a rough assessment. That's the first time I watched one of these primetime games and was like, that didn't go the way that I thought. You know, I love home dogs, especially during primetime, and the Bucks just lost, straight up lost. I mean, the game started the way that I would have hoped, but everything from that Bucks run defense, now I have to get that out of my mind. Awful week. I once worked with this guy and I used to tell him like, you know, like, hey, look, I admit that I did it. And then he just calmly said to me, you know, Andy, it's good that you admit when you do bad things, but like, it doesn't take away from the fact that you still, like, you did them. Just because you said you did them doesn't really make it great. And I guess that is the case. But I am going to try to make up for that lackluster Thursday by sniffing around the graveyard this Sunday. That's not a real saying. It's uh, whistling. Oh, man, I don't know any of them. But this Sunday, found a couple picks that I like and uh, hopefully you do too. But, you know, if you're maybe not confident, maybe you're a little depleted, don't worry about it. Just go over to BetMGM where they got a promotion. If you bet $10 on a money line, any NBA team, BetMGM's gonna credit you with $200 in free bet credits. Any NBA team, 10 bucks, either team hits a three. Even if the team you bet on loses, you'll be credited with $200. Just check the description for the specifics of that promotion. We get it. So looking at this Sunday, I was looking at all the lines. I was looking, wait, what are people liking? Which ones look like rats? Which are not rats? A rat anyway, so family's all rats. Thought the infestation was last week. Is it gonna be this week? Because I definitely saw a couple of prime candidates with the first one being the Detroit Lions at home playing the part of rat. I'm gonna stick with some of my formulas. They're a team at home getting more than a field goal. I believe that prime time wins and losses are overvalued. That's kind of going to be the whole theme of the team that we're betting on. Everyone saw those prime time games last week, and now they have those images of the teams that won or lost cemented in their head. And the Miami Dolphins were one of them. They came back with Tua, won that game, looked great only on the first couple of series, and then were able to do nothing for the rest of the game. But the Lions at home are getting DeAndre Swift back. They're getting St. Brown back. And look how they played the first couple of weeks, pretty competitive and outside of that game versus the Ravens, that wild comeback. Tua has mostly struggled when he's played this year. And now obviously there is the issue of always worrying about him and his health. Are they gonna kind of try to manage the way that he's playing the game? I just think when you're getting more than a field goal at home, it's, it's a place that I'm gonna take the Lions. Another team, a team that was an absolute disgrace the New England Patriots, they got waxed by the Chicago Bears. So now people are gonna probably be very low on them. And then on the other side of that game, you have the Jets who are on this win streak despite Zach Wilson doing absolutely nothing. We just know that they lost Brees Hall. They're kind of a, a mixed bag, but I will trust Belichick to go figure out the Jets. There's a reason they're two and a half point favorites in New York and the Jets are, on, are the ones with the long winning streak. I don't know which quarterbacks I'm gonna play. I'm gonna imagine they give Mac Jones another chance, but this magic is gonna, you know, these wins for the Jets, I you hate to call them fluky, but they're rather unconvincing. And like I said, there's a reason they're home underdogs. And if it was more than three, I would say go ahead and take the Jets. But since it's minus two and a half, I'm gonna go with Belichick coming off a loss. I'm gonna take the Patriots, an undervalued Patriots team at minus two and a half. Now I'm gonna be betting against an overvalued Bears team. The Bears, they just smoke the Patriots. People probably thinking Justin Fields is way better than he is. Why don't you go back and watch tape from all the other games? Now they're gonna go in there to Dallas. Dallas got Dak back last week. One would imagine he feels a little more comfortable throwing the ball this week. No Zeke there, I don't think that's gonna mean a whole hell of a lot in this one, but look for Dak to, to really have his first good game because he struggled week one. Struggled a little bit last week, but they came out of that game with the win. That pass rush with Justin Fields, that seems like a nightmare waiting to happen. And fortunately for y'all, this falls under my I refuse to take double digits threshold where this spread is just a hair under. So give me the Dallas Cowboys at minus nine and a half. Now, when there are close teams, 
two playoff hopefuls. I usually say, hey man, take the team plus three and a half. Well, the only problem is I don't think one of these teams are playoff hopefuls, and that is the Arizona Cardinals, who I saw like 68% of people are betting on. Now, give me the Minnesota Vikings, who I think are a full tier above the Arizona Cardinals. How did Arizona get that last one? A bunch of Andy Dalton primetime pick sixes. Well, maybe if Kirk Cousins was playing in primetime, he'd throw some of those classic pick sixes as well. But this is a classic earlier game where Kirk Cousins shines. They're coming off that bye, gonna be nice and rested. People like Dalvin Cook ready to handle a full workload. Go check out that Arizona Cardinals run defense. I know they had Hopkins back and he played well, but you got Kyler cursing at his coach. They did not look convincing at all, especially in that first half. We're trailing again. If it wasn't for those pick sixes, who knows how that game would have ended up. I'm gonna take the Minnesota Vikings and minus three and a half. And then lastly, I'm going to bet on the Rams at home against Shanahan, who McVay never seems to beat. And my God, did the Rams look poor before the bye, even though they were able to, to sneak just enough wins where they're lingering around 500. They have looked very bad, didn't address the running back issues. They have that Cam Akers situation, but you know, on the other side, San Fran's kind of flailing as well. They took a beating against Atlanta, then came home, and that number one defense got shred apart by Patrick Mahomes. Debo Samuel isn't going to play in this game. What's the deal with McCaffrey and the running back usage? Is he going to be utilized properly? Is Garoppolo struggling? A lot of question marks over there. And this just kind of feels like, you know, back in the Rams stadium, they might squeak this one out. It's pretty much a pick 'em game. It has felt awful anytime you take the Rams because watching that offensive line get obliterated is really, it's a tough watch when you bet on them and you're like, my God. And then you're inviting in San Fran's pass rush. There's a reason that spread is even. Everyone is on San Fran and I think San Fran's been undervalued at points, but they, they seem like they're going through a little bit of a funk coming off the bye. I'm thinking that McVay and staff are going to be able to concoct a game plan. Hell, they've seen this offense enough in the last year where they should be able to figure out the necessary adjust, adjustments to be more successful against them. And then that one guy who absolutely destroys them every single time in Debo Samuel, he ain't going to be on the field. So maybe defending them is going to be a little bit easier. You're going to see Ramsey on Ayuk, and then they're going to have to worry about Kittle and then the running backs. But maybe that is going to be the difference that helps them you know, finally get over the top. Those are the picks that I got for you for this Sunday, week eight. Good luck to all you guys out there. Better luck to me. Do me a favor like I always ask. If you can't, I know I hate to ask for favors after a bad night, which is what I had on Thursday. But uh, subscribe to the channel here. I think it's been growing from what they tell me. That's always nice to see. Toss a like on this video. Come say hello to me on social media. And I'll be back with you tomorrow for Monday Night Football. Hopefully you guys are in better spirits. Oh, and once again, always feel free to take those Josh Jacobs over two and a half reception if you can find them. Later.